Hello, I'm here to talk about behavioural insights, and by that I mean nudging people, not the whole of cultural change. Lots of this you will know, lots of it is here today, uh, all of it is common sense, but we think that by more systematically and explicitly applying behavioural insights, uh, then we can have greater impact in what we do. So what are behavioural insights? Well, they draw on psychology, and they're really about saying, we, we don't think like Spock. That is, we're not supercomputers that can process everything. We don't always act as we intend to. Actually, because we're, we're human, we have a series of beh behavioural and cognitive biases, and we think more like Homer. Um, and one of the ways we think more like Homer than Spock is in our decision-making. Uh, so uh, Homer is very happy, and us are very happy to simplify. So that's my queen being simplified. We're happy to do just enough, to satisfy, to clear the bar. We don't need to see the universe of all the options. We'll make a decision on fewer, and we use rules of thumb. And that's because we make lots of decisions every day in a complicated world. A second type of way our decision-making is affected is we are strongly attached to the, <laughs> feel free to laugh, to the status quo. Um, so even if we wouldn't choose the option from scratch, uh, if, we're, if we're enrolled into it, we tend to stay with it. We value what we have, and also we have a loss aversion. We don't like switching from something we're defaulted into. Um, and this happens more if the decision is complicated. Another effect is called the IKEA effect. And that is simply that uh, we like things if we built them ourselves. So even if there's something free and low cost or out there, uh, we tend to like feeling that we've, we've, we've made it ourselves. And I've heard a bit of that today. So that's some of the biases we have. There are loads. They're all from psychology and cognitive science. Um, but the really, really good news is that there's loads of people who have thought about these, and they've put them all together, and they've thought about how taking these biases into account, we can be more effective as policymakers or as in our improvement. Um, so I'm going to talk you through a framework today. Uh, the good news is most of these frameworks start with uh, just thinking about what behaviour it is that you would like to target. Uh, so that's thinking, defining the behaviour quite specifically. Then they say, well, explore that behaviour. So explore and understand what, why it's happening. Then they say, think about behavioural solutions. And then they say, test those solutions. So the rest of this six minutes is really focused on the solutions element. So the framework that I'm going to talk you through is the Behavioural Insights Team, the Cabinet Office one. And that uses an ease framework. So it says, if you want to encourage a behaviour, make it easy, attractive, social and timely. Um, and the first one is easy. So that's really about saying, uh, do you have the information um, in an easy to get to place? Is it as easy as possible to process? And is it as easy as possible to act on it? Um, and that does mean that more information is not always more. Um, so one of the ways we can do that is by reducing the effort we need to do something. Other ways to make things easy are breaking them down into small steps. Um, or just simplifying, reducing the length of that letter or email. And a really big famous example of uh, making stuff easy is automatic enrolment or using defaults. So when people were automatically put into a pension scheme, the participation in that scheme was much higher. So that's the easiest way to get someone to do something right, put them in it automatically, let them opt out if they like. So that's, that's the easy bit of the framework. The second bit of the framework is make something attractive. Oh, that's supposed to be flashy. Uh, so you can, you can make something attractive by using colour and images and attracting people's attention or something bizarre like my dragon. Attractive is really about saying, can you grab people's attention? Can you make it more appealing for them? And one of the things that we find more appealing uh, is um, personalisation. So uh, HM Court Service have an example where they wrote a text message and they used people's names in the text message and they increased the amount of fine they got paid. And of course, also in attractive is the usual stuff on rewards and incentives, but pitched at what people are interested in, so make it attractive to them. So that's attractive. The next part of the framework is social. So this is simply that we like doing what our peers or our friends here, um, what our friends do. So a lot of this is about drawing on social media, social networks. Um, it's all, most interventions here really convey what the majority of people like you do and then say, convey social approval or disapproval for not doing it, usually approval. Uh, so there's a, a an example in the energy market that they showed people they were using more energy than, than average and that made them reduce it. Uh, the other ways we can make things social are to publicly pledge that we will do something. I'm more likely to exercise if I tell you all that I'm going to exercise. So that, that's social. And then the next element is timely. This, this one just says we're not always consistent over time with our decisions. And uh, an example is uh, with Israeli judges who made much more favourable uh, sentencing decisions after they'd eaten, and therefore much worse ones when they were hungry. So same cost information going on, different decision, different time of day. 
So to make things timely, we have to prompt people uh, when they're receptive to being prompt and remind people to do things. And also the other big thing in this is tell people about the immediate benefits. Because one way we're timing consistent is we're, we're short term. We like, we like the, the short term focus. And finally, in time, you can help people make a plan. So if we can see a clear way to achieving something, we're more likely to do it. So that's EAST, make things easy, attractive, social and timely. It and other frameworks are already being used in health. I've heard lots of it today, really. Um, so there's, there's stuff on reducing DNAs. There's stuff on helping accuracy of prescribing. Um, there's stuff on helping <coughs> people to turn up to health checks. After you've used EAST to get a solution, you need to test it. Um, and that's simply because it's not always that you get the result you might think you would, and also because sometimes something works in one setting, it doesn't work in another setting. And just on here, my notes say to think about the ethics when we're testing, obviously, on patients or treating people differently. So this is almost it for me. Uh, my notes now say so to point at to this top corner, but that's a bit of a jump. So uh, uh, there's loads and loads of things out there, and the Health Foundation have a brilliant programme on uh, behavioural insights in hospitals. Do check all these things and many others out on the internet or come and ask me for where more are. And then finally, sorry for the rush, over to you guys. Um, we would love to hear about behavioural insights uh, in, in your trust, whether they are labelled as insights or not, uh, what impact you think they've had. Uh, please get in touch with us uh, or come and talk to us about behavioural insights. Thank you. <laughs>